Well, thank you very much. And it's fantastic to see so many of you joining our webinar this afternoon. And I'm really excited to be sharing all of my favorite office tips and tricks. And what I've done is I've, I've put in a combination of tips and tricks that you might use yourselves in your everyday use of Microsoft Office, but also tips that will help you when supporting users in your organization who are using Microsoft Office. And I'm going to be covering the key Office applications. So that's Excel, Word, PowerPoint, maybe a little bit of Outlook, and maybe even I'll touch on OneNote at the end as well. And it might surprise you to know that I'm going to start with PowerPoint because I think PowerPoint is a little bit of an unsung hero. So I'm going to start off with PowerPoint because it always gets left to the end. And the first thing I'm going to do is if you have a look at this slide here. I'm going to add in a picture, very typical thing we want to do in PowerPoint. So I'll just go to insert, choose a picture. I'm just going to grab a picture off my hard drive there. But the trouble is with most of us, we put in a picture and not all of us are very creative and it just puts it on the slide. Now I've got to fiddle with it to try and work out how to make that picture look good on my slide. But what PowerPoint will do after a moment or two, and of course, because I'm waiting for it to happen, it's not going to happen. I'm just going to delete that and put that in again. I'm trying, I'm trying to wake up the design checker. There we go. So what you'll see is over on the right hand side, I've got these design ideas that uh, PowerPoint's suggesting for me. And if I just scroll down, I love this one in particular. When I click it, what it'll do, it'll actually make that um, graphic I've just put in a sort of a washed out transparent and put it on the background. Now, as a user, probably you and your users wouldn't have known how to do that. Or I could choose to have it like this, for example. You'll see it's moved the text to the side. But one of the other reasons why I wanted to show you this, if you've got users in your organization who are asking you for photo editing software, you know, for other licenses, for other bits of software, then you need to know that actually PowerPoint has got some really good picture editing tools built into it. So I'm clicked on this picture, look up at the ribbon. If I go to the picture tools, you'll see I've got all of the corrections options so I can correct the contrast and the brightness or I can sharpen it or soften it. I can also recolor it. So if I want to make it black and white or to make it a sepia effect or change the color hues, I can do all of that. And also remove backgrounds. Again, a very common task that users seem to think that you've got to have dedicated third party photo editing software to be able to do that. So that's a really good tip for all of your users. What about this slide though? Now I know every one of you on our call today will have sat through PowerPoint presentations which are just bulleted lists and you yourselves will have created slides like this. Now I know what it's like, you know, you've, you've kind of run out of energy in the last few minutes before you're going to deliver your presentation. You haven't got the effort and the energy to try and make these slides look beautiful. So have a look at smart art. Now a lot of people tended to look at smart art very briefly and then dismiss it. But actually look again, because there are some brilliant pre-prepared graphics for boring bulleted lists. So I've selected the text, gone up to the option here, convert to smart art. And if I choose more smart art graphics, there's all of the different categories. Now my particular text that I had selected is a cycle. So I'm going to go to the cycle category. And I know that this one here looks nice, but there's loads of different ones you can see to choose from. Look up at the ribbon. I've now got the ability to change everything about that graphic. But you'll see that I'm just flicking around, making a few changes. And that just in a number of literally just in a couple of clicks, I've made that boring bulleted list look much more appealing because don't forget PowerPoint slides are supposed to be watched, not necessarily read. So a really good feature to show your users is this document inspector. And what this will do, it'll check for issues such as any of those revision marks. But also if I just run this, so I won't save it. You'll also see if I just click inspect and it's going to be having a good old look. It has found those revisions in the comments and I can use this remove all button to remove it. But also it will also find and remove picture crop information. So again, useful from a security point of view. If you've got users who use um, you know, screen clips and they crop bits out, very sensible to remove the cropped information in case they are inadvertently sharing sensitive information in, in the picture crop information. So I could use remove all to, to get rid of all of those, but I won't do that right now. But anyway, imagine that I'm working on my document. I'm very pleased with what I've done and I'm working away and I suddenly realize, oh my goodness, it's 12 minutes past the hour. Now it's 12 minutes past six here in the UK. It'll be 12 minutes past 10 um, in the US. But whatever time it is, wherever you are, you realize that you're late for a meeting. So you just close that down and then you realize you click don't save. 
And I know that if you haven't done this, I know that all of you will have spoken to end users who have done this. Um, and I'm sure most of you have done this yourselves as well. You think, I can't believe I did that. What a muppet. I closed that document without saving. I don't know what it is. You know, when you're under pressure, you seem to say no to the, oh, why did I do that? And sure enough, it hasn't saved my, you know, it hasn't put in the, the, uh, the graphic that I had put in. Let me just hide that markup again. It hasn't saved the changes I made to the headings. So I'm distraught. But actually, not sure if you were aware, look down here where it says manage document. I've got these options just here where it says there is actually a version of this file that was created today at 12 minutes past 10. So my computer's on US time when I closed without saving. And I just love this. Don't, don't you just love the way it's actually pointing the finger at who's to blame here? So this is user error. <laughs> it's not that word had crashed or that there was a power cut or something. This is the user being an absolute fool and closing without saving but anyway we don't care about the reason so if I click that oh hooray there we go you can see it's maintained my logo and the changes that I made to uh, to the headings fantastic phew anyway time marches on I'm going to dive straight into Outlook now and I'm not going to say too much about Outlook. I'm halfway through my Outlook course at the moment with uh, CBT Nuggets. But one thing that I really encourage people to do, and I certainly always include it in my tips demos, is to use conditional formatting. So have a look at my calendar here. You can see that I like using color to uh, indicate, you know, I've got a little color coding system in my own mind. And I like my lunches to show in yellow. So I can see every day that I've got lunch bl blocked out so I don't inadvertently go without a lunch break. So let's imagine I put an appointment here and I'm going to put in lunch with Sue. And you'll notice that it automatically turned yellow. And that's because I've put in a conditional format. So if you go to your view ribbon tab on the view settings, there's a conditional formatting button. And you can see that I've added a rule for this view called lunch, which makes it go yellow. And the condition is search for the word lunch and then just make it go yellow. So I really love that. I think that's well worth doing. Obviously, it's kind of more useful if you're a, a, a visual person than not, but many people do enjoy using color in their calendars. And you can also do the same sort of thing with your inbox. So I was at a client's quite recently and they, were, they had those privacy screens in front of their monitors. So they found with Outlook 2016, that the actual view of unread emails wasn't very clear. Now, I think it's quite clear when I'm using a normal computer like this, but on their hardware, it wasn't clear which emails were unread and which ones were read. So again, what we did was we used a view. Yeah, you know, we said, okay, we'll change the conditional format because by default, unread messages show in bold and blue, but let's change that. Let's make it show in this ridiculous font here in bright red. <laughs> Click OK. And you're not going to miss the unread emails now, are you? And then just finally, before I, before I hand back for our close, just a final note about OneNote. And my tip for you about OneNote is to use it. You have probably got it on your desktop and some of you may never have used it. Now, in particular, if you're doing a rollout of touch devices, I was working with a customer doing a big rollout for Microsoft Surface Pro 4s. And OneNote was the tool that really made people adopt the touch nature of their devices because it supports ink fantastically. People can take it into meetings. So OneNote is your killer tool for getting users to adopt their new devices if you are rolling out those lightweight touch type devices. My goodness. So as I said, a whistle stop to her there. But if I could just hand back to our chairman to close our session. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention.